Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the Angular 2 Crash Course. Now, if you've been following my channel for a while, you may have seen that I do have an Angular 2 playlist where I go over all the basics and fundamentals. Um, but you may have also noticed that there's some things that no longer work in that series. Um, that's because I made those videos back when Angular 2 was still in the release candidate stage. So there's been some changes to the framework and the syntax, leaving some of those videos useless. Um, so Angular 2 is now stable, and I'm making a, a, a all-in-one guide or crash course, whatever you want to call it, with the updated syntax. All right, so we'll be using Angular 2.2 stable uh, for this course. Now, we're going to go through a few slides for people that are just starting out, so we can go over exactly what Angular 2 is and some of the fundamentals. Uh, then we'll jump into some code from there. Now, after you finish this guide, I would suggest that you check out my 12 Project Angular 2 course from Eduonix. That way you can get some actual projects and some actual applications under your belt. All right, and I'll leave a link in the description. All right, so what you should know before going through this course or guide, um, you should know HTML and CSS. Now, CSS isn't important in this particular video but I would suggest getting really good with HTML and CSS before starting hardcore JavaScript. Um, you should know some basic JavaScript before getting into Angular, but you don't have to be a pro by any means. Um, you should basically just know the fundamentals of programming, things like functions, conditionals, loops, things like that. So what is Angular 2? There's a lot of different JavaScript uh, technologies out there. Some are libraries, some are plugins, extensions, frameworks. Angular 2 is a framework, okay, and it works on the client side. It's not a server-side framework, but I'll go into what it's not in a second. And it's used to create very powerful web applications. It was created and is maintained by Google. It is the most popular JavaScript framework to date. And it's often described as what HTML would have been if it were created for dynamic web applications and not static websites. So as I said, Angular 2 is not a server-side technology. It runs on the client. Um, it can be used on the server, but it's, it's based to, to, to run on the client side. Um, it's not a JavaScript library, such as jQuery or React or MooTools or anything like that. It's not a design pattern like Model View Controller or, or MVVM or anything like that. Uh, it's not a platform like .NET. It's not a language. It's also not a plugin or, ex or an extension. Okay, it's a client side framework. So, what Angular 2 offers, these are just some of the things that it offers, but we have dynamic HTML. Okay, so as I said, it, it's basically what HTML would have been for applications, because in applications you have a lot of dynamic functionality. It's not just markup to display a static website. Uh, it uses powerful templates, fast rendering. Um, uses HTTP services, so you can make GET requests and POST requests. Um, it uses components, so it has a component encapsulation, which is uh, extremely helpful and makes your applications that much cleaner. Form and input handling, event handling, it has routing, um, uses the latest JavaScript standards, uses ES2015, TypeScript, and much, much more. So What's new from Angular 1? Uh, well, Angular 2 is completely different than Angular 1, and a lot of people ask me if, if they should learn Angular 1 first, and I would definitely say no, because uh, I think that it, it will do nothing but confuse you, okay? Because it's very different. Angular 1 uses controllers and scope, um, which are not included in Angular 2. Angular 2 basically um, replace that with components okay everything's based inside of a component now uh, which makes our code cleaner makes it more reusable uh, it also has a reduced learning curve since everything's encapsulated in a component and no longer in scope and different controllers it's a little easier to learn it also uses TypeScript which is a superset of JavaScript and I'll get into that in a second uh, and it also uses ES2015 which is also known as ES6, okay, which is a later standard of JavaScript. Uh, it offers better mobile support for mobile apps. It also uses reactive extensions, or RxJS, um, which is a set of libraries to work with asynchronous data, 
okay and it also gives us something called observables so what is TypeScript as I said it's a strict superset of JavaScript um, so basically it's everything JavaScript is with some added features it's maintained by Microsoft uh, it gives us some features such as static typing uh, makes it look a little bit more like let's say Java or C++ languages like that it also gives us class-based object-oriented programming which is extremely helpful um, and that's based basically what angular 2 is based off of is classes okay every component is a class so components are the main way to build and specify elements and logic on the page there are basic building blocks of the user interface an angular application is basically just a tree of angular components decorators allow us to mark a class as an angular component and provide metadata that determines how the component should be processed, instantiated, and used at runtime. So this is an example of a component. Uh, we're importing the main component package from Angular, and then this is a decorator. Okay, when you see this at syntax, this is a decorator, and we can provide metadata. All right, so the selector is basically what we'll use for the tag, the HTML tag to insert the component. The template is the content of the component. In this case, it's a div with some text you can see we have this um, double curly brace syntax this is interpolation basically we're bringing in a dynamic variable all right called name now if we go down here into the class you'll see in the constructor we're saying this dot name equals max so we're setting this name property to max and that's what's going to display up here we can also have events okay so this button here has a click event events always have parentheses around them and then we're calling a function that's called say my name all right and then you can see that down here under the constructor and it's basically just going to console log my name is and then whatever's in that property in this case it's max all right now if that's confusing to you that's absolutely fine we're going to get more into that later so in addition to components we have services which are used for reusable data services to share between components throughout an application so services, basically, you want to use those to access data. Okay, If you're working with a, an API where you're fetching data from a database or a backend, you want to put that in a service so that you can access it from all components. Okay, You don't want to just stick it in one component because then you can't use it from other ones. So you want to use a service for that. Uh, it keeps the components lean and focused on supporting the view. And services are asynchronous and we can return data as a promise or an observable using reactive extensions all right and I'll get into that a little later so we're just about done with the slides before we get started I just want to go over some of the installation methods so you can create an angular 2 app from complete scratch uh, you'll have to install it using NPM and uh, it, it can get kind of difficult so I would suggest using the quick start uh, this is the GitHub link to the quick start. That's what we'll be doing. There's also an Angular CLI tool. Um, you can install that with NPM as well. You want to install it globally. We're not going to use the CLI tool in this video. However, I do have other videos where, um, where we do use it. All right, so we'll use the quick start. Now the requirements, you're going to need Node.js installed. NPM, which is Node Package Modules, that comes with Node.js, so you don't have to worry about installing that separately. Uh, and then you're also going to need Git. All right, and I'll give you the links in a second to to get those set up. All right, so that's going to do it for the slides. Now we're going to jump in. We're going to set up Angular 2, and we'll get started. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, if you don't have Node.js installed, you want to get that set up. Just go to Node.js.org. Go ahead and download and install it. Uh, it's really easy on Windows. It's just a standard Windows installer. And then if you're on Linux or Mac, it's also easy. I do have a tutorial showing you how to install it in, in Ubuntu. It's also easy with a Mac. Just go ahead and look at the documentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, I'd also suggest that you get Git, especially since we're using the Quick Start. We're just going to uh, clone it using Git. If you're on Windows, you just want to go to gitscm.com click on this download for Windows and just get that installed alright once you have that installed you'll have access to the git bash utility which is a command line utility I would suggest using that but of course you can use your Windows command line as well 
So uh, this is the Angular 2 website, angular.io. This is where you want to find all the documentation, all that good stuff. Uh, but what we want to do is get the quick start. Okay, so that's at github.com slash angular slash quick start. And you can download the zip if you want. If you click on this here and then click download zip. But we're just going to clone it using git. Okay, and it has a command right here that we can use. So what I'm going to do is open up my, let's see, I'm going to go to my C drive and then projects. Now, like I said, if you have the git bash utility, you can right click and then just click git bash here and that'll open up a command line right in that folder. Okay, so what I want to do is clone the quick start into that folder. So I'm just going to grab this command and paste that in. And instead of calling this my proj, I'm going to call it my app. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. And what that did is it created a folder called my app with the quick start in it. So I'm going to say CD my app so that we can go into that directory. All right. Now, before we install the dependencies, I'm going to add it to my editor, which I'm using Visual Studio Code, uh, which I would suggest either this or Atom uh, is what I use for uh, Angular 2 because it uses TypeScript and it has some really good TypeScript highlighting. So let's see, we're going to add a project folder here of my app. All right, so this is the quick start. This is what it gives us, and I'm definitely not going to go through all of this. We have the index.html file. Okay, if this has the main my app tag right here. Uh, that's where the app comp where the main app components loaded. It also has the all the includes that we need, script tags. Now, if we click on package.json, this is where uh, all the dependencies are. You can see Angular actually comes in a bunch of different packages. We have the common, the compiler, the core, HTTP and forms, modules. Um, it comes in a bunch of separate packages. So in order to install all of this, we have to go over and say npm install. Okay, so that'll get everything set up. It'll create a node modules folder for us. Okay, it might take a minute or two. And you can see down here all the other dependencies. We have our TypeScript right here. It comes with Light Server. That's the, the dev server that we can run. Um, reactive extensions right here. System.js gets all of our packages together. Karma, which is a testing utility, which we're not going to get into. But it does include quite a bit uh, of stuff here, the quick start. All right, so it looks like that's all set. You can see now there's a node modules folder. So now we should be able to run our dev server by saying npm start. And that should open it up in our browser. And there we go. So you can see that mine is it's running on uh, 33002. I think that usually it's on 3000. I might have something on that port right now running. So that's why it's on that. But yours may be 3000. All right, so let's go ahead and just open up the console. It's good to have that open, F12 and Chrome. Um, and then what we're going to do is just look at the files here. So in the app folder, this is where our components go. Now, notice there's, um, there's a bunch of different app.component files. What we want to focus on is the TS files. That's the TypeScript files that we want to edit. All right, pay no attention to the, the map files or the spec or the JS. Um, basically, app component TS gets compiled into app component JS. So this is what we want to work in the TS. The, the compiled file uh, is much more difficult to work with, so we're not going to touch that. Um, the first file I want to look at is main.ts. This is basically where we bring in um, app module, okay? and then we're going to bootstrap that app module. Now, you don't have to really understand what this is. I'm just going to try to explain it quickly. Um, Angular 2 has a bootstrap module that does just that. It bootstraps the entire application. All right. Um, if we go into app module.ts, this is where we import ng module. Um, that basically binds together all the components, um, all the modules, things like that. 
and then let's see we have our app component.ts this is the main app component this is what's being imported all right now every component you have to import the component package from angular core and then it has a decorator called component a selector okay we already looked at this in the slides and then a template and basically we're just going to say hello and then whatever's in the name property which you can see is angular so that's why we're seeing this hello angular all right and since the selector is my app if we look at the index html file you'll see that that's what it is right here my app all right so what we're going to do is in the main app component file let's just experiment a little bit here all right so let's add another property we'll call it email all right and we'll set this you know what i'll do is set the name to john doe let's set the email to uh, john at gmail.com all right so we should be able to put that in here now i'm just going to put this on multiple lines now we're able to do this because we're using template literals notice that this is a backtick not a quote that allows us to use multiple lines all right so let's go ahead and let's put a paragraph okay we can put any html we want in here and we'll put email and then we'll use that double curly brace and in here we'll say email all right so let's save that and that should reload and there we go i'm actually going to take away the I don't want the H1 around the paragraph. So let's put that right. Actually, we'll just put it right here. All right. So you can see that it's it's uh, using interpolation and it's putting in the email value. So let's say we also want an address. We'll say address and we'll set this one to an object. OK, so we'll say street say 12 Main Street we'll put a city say Boston and a state okay now if we go up here and we were to put in another paragraph and then say address and save you can see that it just says object Okay, because it doesn't know what which one of these to display. Um, so what we can do is, if we want the street, we can say dot street. Okay, so we'll save that, and now it gives us a street. So let's add next to it address dot city, and then address dot state. All right, so that gives us the address and I'll put a label here as well all right and we can wrap the label in strong tags now as far as the application the, the application isn't gonna do much I just want to focus on the functionality and the syntax of angular 2 okay so now that you know how to create variables or properties down here and use them up here uh, we're going to take a look at creating our own component. Instead of using this app component, I usually like to use this as kind of a, uh, a meeting place for all of my subcomponents. So in the app folder, we're going to create a new folder called components. And inside there, let's create a new file and we'll call it user.component.ts. All right, make sure you use the TS. All right, now you'll notice that automatically it creates a user component JS and a JS map. Okay, so it automatically compiles the TypeScript files. Now I'm going to copy everything we have in the app component TS and put it in the user component. And then we're going to change the selector to user. And then we're going to change the class to user component. All right, so we'll save that. And then what we want to do is when you add a component you need to add it to the app module.ts file you can see we're importing the main app component 
Now let's import the user component. Okay, and that's going to be in the components folder slash user component. All right, now we have to, what do I do here? We have to also add it to the declarations. Anytime we create a component and we import it, we need to add it here as well. Why do I keep misspelling that? All right, so let's go ahead and save that. Now, if we go to our app component now, we want to get rid of all this. And we can now use user. All right, now we're using user because that's what we used as our selector right here. Okay, and then down here we can actually just clear all this out. So let's go ahead and save that. And it should look the exact same, but now this is coming from our user component, not the, the main app component. So now what I want to do is in our user component, we're going to create a constructor. And this runs every time the component is rendered. So if we say console.log constructor ran, and we save it and when it reloads you'll see we get constructor ran now we can change any of these properties we want down here so if we say this okay you want to use this and we'll say dot name equals let's say Sam Smith okay if we go ahead and save that and let it reload now we get hello Sam Smith now a, a good way to do this is not to define the values up here but to um, or at least define the the actual value you can define the variables in fact you have to define the variables so the properties but we want the values to be down here so let's go ahead and just copy all of this and put it in here Actually, let's move this back all right and we'll tab these over so we want to set all of these to have this dot in front of them. All right, and then up here, we don't want to actually define the value, but we do want to define the property variable. And then for address, just go like that. All right, so if we save that, that should still work. Um, but it's good practice to use typing, okay, or typings. So for name, we know that that's going to be a string. Um, so we can actually define that to be a string. Okay, same thing with email, that's also a string. Now for address, that's an object and it has certain fields inside of it. So what we can do is create an interface for this address property. So down here, let's say interface address and we want to define the field so name which will be a string I'm sorry not name street we have city string and state string alright and then all we have to do up here is say that we want this to be of the type address okay so we'll save that and if we look at the command line that's running the server, if there's any errors, this will tell us. All right, now let's say that we want, um, let's throw this off a little bit and change this street to the word streets. All right, now you can already see we're getting an error here. It's saying that um, the type address does not have streets in it. Okay, you can see it doesn't exist. Streets doesn't exist in type address. If we save that, this should also tell us that. So if we look right here, where is it? Streets does not exist in type address. So whatever we have here should match with the interface. Okay, so we'll change that back to street. So now what I want to do is I want to add an array of hobbies for this user. Okay, so let's say hobbies, and we want to set that 
to string, but it's going to be an array. So you want to add the brackets. And then down here we'll say this dot hobbies. And let's say music movies and sports. Okay, so up here let's put in h3 and we'll say hobbies. Now if we just put in our double curly braces and we say hobbies, let's save that. Now, if you want this format to just have each hobby with a comma, that's fine. You can leave it like that. But a lot of the times you want to loop through um, through an array and then maybe I'll put a list item or whatever it is you want to do with each one. So to do that, we can use uh, we can use the ng4 directive. So let's say we want a ul. And then inside here, we'll have li's. Now we want to loop through those hobbies and output an li for each one. So in here we're going to say asterisk ng4 and we're going to set that to hobby um, of hobbies. All right. Actually there should be a let right here. So let hobby of hobbies. So now we should have access to each one uh, using this variable. So inside the li, we're going to put our double curly braces and put hobby. Okay, let's save that. And now you can see that it's outputting a list item for each hobby. Now, in addition to ng4, we also have ng if. So what I'm going to do here is create another property called show hobbies. And we're going to set that. Well, we're not going to set it here. We're going to set the type to boolean. Okay, and then down here, let's say this dot um, show hobbies, and we're going to set that to false. Um, actually, this should be boolean. So we're setting it to false. Now let's wrap this in a div, and we're going to put ng if equals. show hobbies. Okay, we'll wrap the UL. All right, so if we go ahead and save that and reload, let's see. Can't bind to NF. Oh, that should be NG if. Okay, so now you can see the hobbies are not showing anymore. So, now what we'll do is let's create a button that is linked to that has a click event that's linked to a function to display those hobbies. So we'll go right above the ng if we just created and put a button. Now whenever you want to use an event, you use parentheses and then whatever that event handler, okay, which is going to be click. And then we'll set that to a function. Let's call it um, toggle hobbies. All right, and then here we'll say show hobbies. All right, so if we save that, that'll show a button. Okay, right now if I click it, we get an error because there is no toggle hobbies function. So let's go create that down here. After the constructor, let's say uh, toggle hobbies. And just to test it out, we'll say console log show. Now, if I click it down here, you can see we get show. All right. So what we want to do now is we want to set um, show hobbies to true. So we can easily do that by saying this dot show hobbies equals true. Save it. Now, if I click it, it shows our hobbies. Now I want to make it so that if we click it again, it hides them, so it kind of toggles them. So what we can do is do an if statement here. So we'll say if this dot show hobbies is equal to true, then we want to set it to false. 
and then we'll say else and let's wrap this we'll set it to true okay so if we go ahead and save that now if I click it shows it click it again it hides it all right now we can also set conditionals up here for instance if they're hidden we want it to say show hobbies but if they're displayed we want it to say hide hobbies so what we can do is let's open up our curly braces here and we'll say look at the show hobbies value if um, if it's true then we want this to say hide hobbies if not we want this to say show hobbies all right so now let's save it now if we click that now it says hide hobbies okay and it switches all right so we've covered uh, quite a bit already um, in this very simple application what I want to do now is go over uh, inputs okay and data and um, binding okay so we can create an input and bind it to any of these properties so what we'll do is go let's see what do I want to put to, we'll go under everything and let's create a form we actually don't even need the form tags but I think it's good practice all right so let's say label name put a line break and then we'll have an input with the type of text okay that's gonna have a name of name and then we're going to use what's called ng model and that's used to basically bind this to a property now ng model is it's basically two-way um, so we have to use brackets and parentheses and then we're going to say ng model equals and we want to bind it to the name property all right now if i save this we're going to get an error okay we get an error because uh, we need to we need to include the forms module in order to use ng model so we need to go to app.module.ts and up here we're going to say import forms module and that's going to be from at angular slash forms okay now we have to include that in the imports right here Let's say forms module Okay, we'll save that and now you can see that we have this input it says John Doe if I go ahead and clear that out you'll see that it actually binds to that h1 up there all right I'm actually gonna get rid of the hello we don't need that okay so whatever we type in here is gonna reflect up there which is really cool Obviously, when I reload, it's going to go back because we're not persisting the data, but it is, however, bound to uh, to that property. All right, so let's just add some for the for the rest of them. I'm going to actually put a line break here, and we'll copy that. Okay, so we have name. Let's also do the email. And when you use ng model, you also have to have a name attribute with the same um, the same value. So email. What else do we have? We have our address fields. So let's say street, and we can actually set this to address dot street. Okay, this will be the city. And we'll set that to address dot city. This will be what state. All right. So let's see. Let's also put. I'm going to put an HR right here. All right. Let's save that. So now we have our form and it has all the different values and no matter what we change here, you can see that it's actually changing it 
up above as well. All right, let's actually put an, put an H3 here. We'll say edit user. All right. Now we can also work with forms uh, without using ng model and using that that binding technique. So what I want to do is create a, an input here to add to this hobbies list. So let's go right under the UL and we'll put an input. Actually, let's just copy one of these. Okay, and we'll just say edit. No, not edit. Add hobby. And we're not going to use ng model here. Oops. Okay, so we're not going to use ng model, but we do want to identify this input. So we're going to use um, a number sign, and then we're going to call this hobby. All right, now we're going to wrap this actually in a form tag. Okay, and we're going to add an event handler onto the form tag for submit. So let's put in parentheses and we'll say submit. And when it's submitted, we'll call add hobby. Okay, now we want to pass along this input value. So right here, we should be able to say hobby dot value. All right, so let's add that down here. Say add hobby. And that should take in hobby. And then let's just do a console.log hobby. Okay, so let's make sure that works. We'll say test and enter, and we get test. So all we need to do now is to push that onto the hobbies array. So to do that, we can say this.hobbies.push and pass along hobby. Okay, so let's go ahead and we'll say poetry, enter, and then it adds there. All right, we can add as many as we want. If we reload, it's going to go away, of course, because we're not persisting it to a database or an API or anything. Um, but, you know, this is all about the user interface right now. Now, if we want to be able to delete these from the interface, that's easy as well. So let's go up here and we're just going to add a button next to the hobby. We'll give it a click. We'll set it to delete hobby. Okay, and for the text, I'm just going to put an X. All right, now we need to know which hobby we want to delete. So we want to pass along the index. Now when we do an ng4, we can also add to the end of this, we can put a semicolon and then say let, um, I'm going to say let i equals index. All right, and then what we'll do is pass that i along to delete hobby. So now let's go create that. Okay, delete hobby, that's going to take along the index. And then all we have to do here is splice from that array that index. So we can say this dot hobbies dot splice. Pass in the index and we just want to delete one from that index. So let's save it. And now if we go and click show hobbies, let's say movies, we can go ahead and delete that. All right, we can add them and we can delete them. Okay, so now what I want to do is create a service. Okay, so we're going to look at two things here. We're going to look at services. We're also going to look at the HTTP module. Okay, I want to be able to make a request to an outside API and bring data into our application. All right, so we want to grab data from I don't remember the exact URL, but it's uh, this right here, jasonplaceholder.typeycode.com. Okay, this basically gives us a, um, a free online REST service. And we can get posts, comments, albums, photos, to-dos, or users. Okay, so we're gonna, we want to grab some posts. 
and it shows you the different routes you can use. You can even make post requests, puts, deletes, but we want to make a get request to posts. Okay, and you can see that it gives us, I think, a hundred different posts with um, an ID, title, body. So what we want to do is set up a service. So in the app folder, we'll create a folder called services. And let's create a file. We'll call it posts.service.ts. All right, and then let's see. In here, we want to import a couple things. We want to import something called injectable because we want to be able to uh, inject this service as a dependency. So that comes from Angular slash core. And then we want to be able to use the HTTP module. So we're going to import HTTP from Angular slash HTTP. And we also want we're going to be working with an observable through reactive extensions and we want to import the map operator so that we can map that data. So we want to say import rxjs slash add slash operator oops, slash map. All right. Now to use the injectable, we're going to add the injectable decorator just like that. And then we can create our class, which we need to export. So export class, and we're going to call it posts service. All right, now inside here, we'll create a constructor. And let's just do a console.log. And we'll say posts service initialized. Now in order to use this HTTP module, we need to um, import it through here. So we're going to say private HTTP and set it to that HTTP just like that. Now we want to use this in our user component. So we're going to go to our user component and we need to import the service up here. Okay, so import post service and that's going to be from we want to go dot dot slash outside of the components folder into services and then post service right or no post dot service all right now we also need to uh, add that as a provider. So we're going to go in the component decorator under the template, which ends right here. And we need to say um, providers, which is an array. And then we want to pass in post service. All right. So if we save that, we're going to get an error. Or we should, I would think we'd get an error because we need to uh, import the HTTP module. All right, so let's go into app.module.ts. And just like we imported the forms module, we're going to add here HTTP module, which comes from Angular slash HTTP. And then we also need to add it down here. All right, we must not be getting the error because we haven't tried to use the service function yet, or we haven't created it yet. So inside post service under constructor, let's create a function called get posts. All right. And then from here, what we want to do is make a get request. So we're going to return this dot HTTP dot get. And then we want to pass in here the URL we want to get from, which is going to be this right here. Okay, we'll paste that in there. And then we want to go on the next line and say dot map. Okay, this is going to actually, uh, we want to return an observable. So we want to map response to res.json. Okay, it's going to be in JSON format. And that's it. So let's save it. And then what we want to do is call this from our component 
and load up the posts. So let's go to user component TS and we'll go down to, uh, let's see, the constructor. That's where we'll do this. Uh, and we should be able to use this, the post service, but we need to inject it into the constructor. So we're going to say private post service, and we're going to set it to post service, which we imported up above. All right, and then in the constructor, let's say this dot post service, and we want to call the get post function. Now this is going to return an observable, so we have to subscribe to it. All right, so let's do dot subscribe. And then in here, that will give us our posts and we can set it to an arrow function. And for now, let's just console dot log posts. Okay, see what that gives us. Save it. And there we go. So you can see it's giving us 100 posts with titles, bodies, IDs. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to have a property up like we do up here um, for posts. So let's say, I'm sorry, up here, we'll say posts and we're going to set it to post. Okay, and that's going to be an array. So now this is going to be an interface that we create just like we did with the address. So we'll say interface post and that's going to have an ID, which will be a number. It'll have a title string and a body string. All right. And then what we want to do is set this dot posts equal to the posts that are coming in from the observable from the service. Okay, so we'll save that and then we should be able to access the post from our template. So let's go up here under the form. We'll put an HR, put an H3 and we'll say posts. Okay, and just like we did with the um, hobbies, we're going to use NG4. Okay, but I want to put that in a div. So NG4 equals let post of posts and then in here let's put an h3 that'll be where the title goes so let's do post dot title and then a paragraph and we'll say post dot body okay let's save it go back and there we go. There's all the posts coming in from the API. Now, this is getting a little cluttered with all this HTML, all this markup in the template. So what we can do is we can actually set a separate file for the template. So if we say inside components, let's say new user dot component dot HTML. All right. And then what we'll do is from the user component TS, we're going to grab from the H1 all the way down to the last div. We're going to cut that out and paste that in the HTML file. Save it. And then in here, we're going to change this to template URL. Oops. I'll change it to template URL and set it to user.component.html. Now, in order to use relative paths here, we have to actually add something else here to our decorator. You know what? Let me just have these over. So we have to add module uh, module ID and then set it to module.id. Okay, and that will give us a, a text editor error, but it should be fine. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. And now it should be coming from the HTML file. So just to test it out, let me just say test. And there it is. Okay, so just to separate things a little bit, kind of 
thins up your component file. So we've looked at quite a bit so far, uh, components, binding, templates, events, directives, services. The last thing I want to look at is routing. Okay, so we're going to just implement the router. Um, now what I want to do is create another component. And this is going to be called about.component.ts. And let's just copy everything that's in the main app component ts file. Okay, and then we'll just paste that in. Let's change the selector to about. And then in the template, let's just put an H1. And we'll say about this app. Okay, then we want to export about component. All right, now what we have to do to be able to use this is bring it into app.module just like we did with the other components. So let's go ahead and do that. About. That's going to come from about.component. Okay. Now it's not going to show up anywhere because uh, we haven't loaded it. I mean, we could include it in the main app component, but I want to add a router so that we can actually go to slash about and that'll load that template up or that component up. So to start off with the router, we need to create a file inside the app folder. And we're going to call this uh, app dot routing dot TS. All right. And then in here, we want to import a couple things. We want to import something called module with providers, and that's going to be from Angular core. And then we also want to import uh, routes and router module. And that's going to be from Angular slash router. All right. Now we need to bring in the components that we want to use in the router, which is going to be the um, user and the about component. So let's go ahead and do that. User component that's going to be from dot slash components slash user dot component. OK, we also want to bring in the about. All right. So now we want to create a variable. I'm going to use const and we're going to say app routes and then colon routes. And we're going to set that to an array of objects. OK, this one is this is going to take a path. Now, this is going to be for the, the root path. So we're going to leave that blank and we want to use the user component for that root. All right. And then we also want the about. So we're going to say path about component will be whoops, about component. All right. And then finally, we just want to export down here. Say export const routing and then just throw in that module with providers equals router module. And then we're going to say dot for root. And then we just want to pass in that out app routes variable. And that's it. So let's go ahead and save that. Then we want to go to our app module TS file. And we're going to go right here and import routing from app dot routing. And we have to add that in the imports right here. Just like that. OK, we'll save that. Now, a couple other small things we need to do. We're going to go into our index HTML and then right below the bot, the opening body, we're just going to put in base 
href equals and then slash. So we're setting our, our root, our base route. All right, so let's save that. And then we want to go to our main app component. And instead of, uh, where are we? Main app component. Instead of outputting user, we're going to output router dash outlet. Because this is now dynamic depending on whatever route URL we're at. All right, let's save it. And let's see. Not part of any ng module. Let's see what the problem is here. If we go to app module. Oh, we didn't add the about component to the declaration. Okay, we'll save that. Okay, so um, the, the home route is showing the user component. That's good. Now let's go to slash about. And now it's showing the about component. All right, so if we were to add more components, we could add them to our routes by adding them right here. Okay, so that's how we can use the router. And if we want to put a link to the about page, let's see, we could put that in the main app component, HTML. So right here, if we want to Um, now, as far as linking to our routes, we want to use router link. So router link to slash for the home, which is also the user component. All right, let's save that. And then this will be to about. That's going to go to slash about. All right, I'm not going to focus on what it looks like. It's if you want to bring in bootstrap and make it look better, that's simple. All right, so now if we click about, it takes us to about, home takes us back to the user component. All right, so that's how we can implement the router. So, we're going to go ahead and stop here. Uh, I would definitely suggest that you move on to uh, my 12 project course. It is extremely cheap for the amount of content that it includes. Um, if, if you don't feel like spending any money, that's fine. I would suggest moving on to one of the Angular 2 projects that I have uh, on YouTube. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't like it. And I will see you next time.